Hello all you fellow musicians, it is me, the Gamer Musician. Sorry that it's been so long, I just didn't want to prematurely start making content on Breath of the Wild, but having finished the game's main story, gathered all 18 memories, and completed all 120 shrines, I finally feel ready to start making theories on this game again. Okay, so today, I have a big video for all of you. Theorizing on the timeline placement of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now, I'm pretty sure I've discovered all of the locations, but if there happens to be some tiny hidden area in the corner of the map that I happen to miss, please let me know in the comments. Regardless, here is the video. Oh, and there's gonna be a few minor, okay fine, major spoilers, but that's how it works, right? Okay, now, to start off, I'm gonna mention this specific memory. Yeah, it's basically the first thing thrown around to start off all timeline discussions. Recovered memory number one, subdued ceremony. This memory is honestly a pretty big piece of evidence for the specific timeline. As Zelda has Link undergo the fabled ceremony of legend, she says, where the skyward bound, adrift in time, or steeped in the glowing embers of twilight, the sacred blade is forever bound to the soul of the hero, which is a big reference to a number of games. Skyward Sword and Ocarina of Time, which both are in the pre-timeline split, and Twilight Princess, which is in the child timeline. So talking about this memory is generally the first thing that needs doing. HMK even said it. There's no arguing it, folks. And I agree it's a pretty big reference to the child timeline. However, that line alone does not 100% confirm it. Okay, so in the same way that Termina and Low Rule exist in all timelines, so too does the Twilight Realm. And most people generally accept that the Interloper War was before Ocarina of Time, most likely during the Era of Chaos, hence the Shadow Temple. So what could this mean? Well, the Twilight could very easily attack Hyrule in other timelines, since they exist there in the other realms. Though I do think it's a child timeline reference personally, thinking about it in this way allows me to have a look at areas referencing other timelines. First off though, I want to look at the other references to the child timeline in depth. First, in the Gerudo Desert, just south of Gerudo Town, is a location referred to as the Arbiter's Grounds. Of course, there's no evidence to support that the Arbiter's Grounds only exists in the Child Timeline, however, it does only appear there. In Breath of the Wild, you can fight the giant Molduga mini-boss, as well as finding a Korok and a rare ore deposit there. But the actual location does appear pretty similar to the most well-known area of the Twilight Princess dungeon, the rooftop, the area where Ganondorf was meant to be executed as well as where the sages exist, but also where the Mirror of Twilight is held. Though unlike in Twilight Princess, only that area is visible, and by that I mean the tops of the little spires. It's kinda sad to see this once majestic structure completely flooded under the sands. I have a theory I'm working on to do with this, but that is for another day. But going back to the Mirror of Twilight, Palmore Ruins. While I personally don't see this as the mirror, mainly due to its size, it does display a number of similarities to it. Also, how about over Lake Hylia? We can see, and cross, the Bridge of Hylia, another structure only seen so far in the Child Timeline. Okay, now a couple of map locations, and other hints towards the Child Timeline. Keep in mind that there are a lot of references in this map, and I'm not going to mention all of them, just a few of my favourites I guess. Rutala River and Rallus Pond in the Zora region are references to the Zora royalty of Twilight Princess, while Toto Lake, Mikau Lake and Lulu Lake are references to some of the primary Zora from Majora's Mask. Perhaps Link brought these names back to Hyrule before becoming a spirit? Just southeast of Kakariko Village, we see Midler Woods. It's not direct, but it's likely a reference to Midna, the eponymous character from Twilight Princess. But there's one other big issue with the child timeline I haven't mentioned yet. The Temple of Time. While its design may seem to show it off as the child timeline one, there's a big issue with this. We do see the Temple of Time in Twilight Princess, and it's in the woods, and this is already an issue. 
In Breath of the Wild, the Temple of Time is actually located in the Great Plateau, which is quite strange. Faron Woods are shown in the game, and they are definitely not on the Great Plateau. So how did this happen? Also, while the Temple of Time is desolate in Breath of the Wild, it's definitely in much better condition than it is during Twilight Princess. I mean, look at it. Now, let's move on to the adult timeline. Once again, before we get to the map, a really interesting point. Back to memory number one. After Zelda says everything I mentioned earlier, she also says some other stuff. Just, it is not subtitled. And the champions speak over it. So it's kind of hard to hear. But within this segment, she says, over the seas of time and distance. A sea reference. Huh. In other translations, it's even more blatant. I can only really understand the French version due to me having some classes in it, though I hear that these same things are referenced in the German dubs and even the Japanese dub. Par delà les mers, dans sa quête du pouvoir d'en forger par les dieux. I'm gonna save the second half of that until later on, but par delà les mers literally translates to mean beyond the seas. Pretty blatant. The Japanese version, and I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that, actually translates directly to you cross the seas when you seek the gold made by the gods, which is likely referencing the infamous Triforce quest from Wind Waker. Also, there's some other interesting references. The importance placed on Ocarina of Time sages. In Goron City, there's a statue of Darunia right next to the statue of Daruk. Champion Obosa goes on about Naburu right after completing Divine Beast Var Naboris. Speaking of the Divine Beasts, all of them are named after sages who never awakened in the child timeline. Rudania is Darunia, Ruta is Ruto, Naboris is Naburu, and Meadow is Medley. But the biggest piece of evidence of all is the Zora Stone Monuments. On the tablet, History of the Zora, Part 5, it references the sage princess Ruto, and also mentions how it is said that Ruto then awoke as a sage, facing this foe alongside the princess of Hyrule and the hero of legend. Ruto never awakened as a sage in the child timeline, at least not that we know of. If this is in the adult timeline, a lot is explained. Also, I need to mention the existence of the Korok and the Rito. I don't think either try about evidence of any timeline, but I still felt the best spot to bring them up was under the adult timeline. The map is ripe with references here too. There's a mountain somewhere named Mount Daphne's. It's probably named after Daphne's Nohansen Hyrule, aka the King of Red Lions. Also, in towards the Zora's Domain region, just southwest of it actually, we see a lake known as Telta Lake. As with Midler Woods before, it may be a misspelling, but I still think it's a clear reference to Tetra, the alter ego of Princess Zelda and Wind Waker. Actually, in that exact same area is a set of islands that had me really happy when I saw them, since they referenced my childhood Zelda game, Phantom Hourglass. Linebeck Island and Zaus Island are both named after characters in that game, and just quickly before the comments, in Phantom Hourglass, the island was named Zaus's Island, hence this new one is named after the person. Also, a collection of islands share identical names to islands in the world of the Ocean King. Molada Island, Bannon Island, and Merkay Island are all named directly. So if this is the adult timeline, Link and Tetra, well, mostly Link, could have returned some of these names. However, as with the child timeline, there's a big issue with this timeline as well. New Hyrule. After the events of Wind Waker and Phantom Hourglass, Link, Zelda, and from what I can gather, the rest of Hyrule citizens moved to New Hyrule to start afresh. So why would they move back? Did New Hyrule flood too? Then how did Old Hyrule unflood? Maybe the Korok succeeded. Hence the abundance of rock salt from an ancient sea which is all around Hyrule. Anyway though, on to the downfall timeline. Woohoo! Now, remember that quote I pulled from the French version of the game? Dans sa quête du pouvoir de forger par les dieux. Now, this part basically refers to a golden power created by the gods. Interestingly, this seems like a pretty big reference to the board game The Legend of Zelda Triforce of the Gods, released in Japan in 1992, published by Bandai Namco. Okay, fine, it's a reference to the Japanese title of what we know as A Link to the Past, which is pretty interesting. 
Also, once again, I need to bring up all the stuff I said before about the sages, excluding the medley var meadow thing, since they also all awoke as sages in the downfall timeline. I mean, heck, they even all had villages named after them in Zelda 2. And in the map, again, there's references galore. Oran Bridge in the Zora region is a clear reference to the Queen of the Zora in A Link Between Worlds. Interestingly enough, this queen ruled the River Zora, a race who we've literally only seen in the Downfall timeline other than Four Swords Adventures. Also, there's the Serra's Scablands just west of Hyrule Castle, another reference to A Link Between Worlds. Also, there's the Kakariko region's Sahasra Slope. Again, another not complete slash correct spelling, but one that has some great references to the Downfall timeline recurring character slash descendant of the sages, Sahasrala. Okay, cool. So, I left out a load of map locations, but this script is already longer than usual, and I'm not done yet. So, the big question, the reason you clicked in this video, where do I think this game could take place? Which timeline? Where? Previously in a different video, like back near E3 last year, I stated about Link being asleep for the third time in the franchise. I don't think that anymore. So what do I think? Child? Adult? Downfall? Unified? Timelines merging? First off, I'm crossing off Unified, since Aenuma literally told us it was after Ocarina of Time. Merging the three timelines into one, I'm gonna cross off as well. I really don't agree with that theory. I want to make a full video about it, so remember to subscribe for that. Basically though, it's just one of those things that if you think logically about it, it's just too unlikely. So onto the three timelines. I feel like now we can split these into two groups. Child and adult slash downfall. Actual timeline placement is one of those super interesting things. Do you believe in the words of the Zora King and his tablets, as well as the later words of Zelda? Or do you believe in the earlier words of Zelda? Until Nintendo gives us an official placement, we cannot 100% know. But personally, I'm going to cross off the child timeline. The words of the Zora just hold more worth in my eyes than those of the Hylians, and not just because of their royal family, if you know what I mean. Nah, no, but Zora live longer than Hylians, and therefore it just seems more likely that their words are more reputable as less generations have passed, and therefore it is less likely for the whole Chinese whispers effect to happen, you know, where words or facts are misconstrued or even lost. Also, there just seems like there's more evidence for the two adult timelines, like the sage's importance. Now, with only two timelines left, which one is it? Well, once again, I have my own theory. By the end of the adult timeline, as far as we know, most people had already left Hyrule, bound for Spiritrax's new Hyrule. So if this game was set in the adult timeline, Hyrule would be pretty empty, and potentially still flooded. Due to those couple of things, I strongly believe this game takes place in the downfall timeline. As to the exact location in that timeline, again, it's kinda hard. This timeline isn't necessarily as clean cut as the other two, and is a lot more full, not to mention the poor state of the land throughout the entire thing. The destruction just matches Breath of the Wild a lot, so it kind of fits. Though, since we don't really know much about the pacing of the downfall timeline and the time between games, it really could be anywhere. Though the likely position is much later than anything else we've ever seen. The Guardians aren't seen anywhere else in any timeline, though the Zelda team made its design reminiscent of the original design of the Octorok. So perhaps the Sheikah did something similar. The original design is from the first game, which is quite late in the timeline. If this is the case, the game would have to be at least 10,000 years after Zelda 2, since the whole 10,000 year thing happened, and Guardians and Divine Beasts fought Ganon, and stuff. You know the story. Again, that's not necessarily confirmed, because it would still have to leave some form of issues to do with the resurrection of Ganon. Though perhaps Calamity Ganon's current state may still have something to do with that. You know, I've said a theory about this prior, and thinking about it now it could actually hold up slightly well, though I'm gonna remake that. Anyway though, that's pretty much all I've gotta say for this topic. This video took me a fair while to make, so I'd really appreciate those likes and shares. Or maybe I missed something major, leave it in the comments. And as always, don't forget to subscribe to me for some more video game music themed videos from The Gamer Musician.